Welcome to another episode of The More You Share, The More You Know. My name is Catherine Salazar and I work at the Education Service Center Region 19 in El Paso. Our show today will focus on part one of our ePortfolio and Project Share. As you see on the screen, I have gone to the projectsharetexas.org website and that is pretty much where people log in. Recently, this website has changed its layout. And without going further into too much detail about the website, you need to know that at the top right corner, you can still log in with your same username and password. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and log in to my Project Share account. And go to my portal. One of the things that you have to know about Project Share is that automatically, by having an account, you have a public website that you can use to communicate with your parents and students, for example. And they would not need a username and password to see that information. Again, it's a public website. So the first thing I want to start by showing you today is at the top left of your screen, right above your name, is your URL address. And that is the address you would want to share with your parents or students. It's always epsilon.com, and then it has a slash and your username. For mine, it's ksalazar1. When I click on that hyperlink, it will open up a new tab or window in your screen. This is the current live website that I have on Project Share. I've already populated it with a lot of information, including my picture and a welcome note at the center. On the left, you see various menu items that may or may not be the same as yours. Everyone has a default menu that can be either edited or you can even add your own custom menu items to that left side. On the right side, you have something called quick links. Your quick links can be other websites that you're pointing your audience to. Also included in the quick links are any memberships of groups or courses that you wish to indicate on the quick links that you're a member of. One of the key features that I really like about this public ePortfolio is the very top right corner has something called an access key. And this is really, really important because you can decide to have certain pieces of information on your website that's hidden from other audience members. So for example, if I'm a teacher that wants to post answers to homework questions for parents to be able to help their students out, I would have a secret code just for parents here. I communicate that code with them, and then they type that in in the corner, and the website will reload with secret information that nobody else is able to see. So I'm definitely going to go into that in today's show. I'm going to go ahead and close this website with the tab, and that means I'm back in my portal that I needed a username and password for to see. On the left side of our menu, I'm going to click on My ePortfolio, and that will expand the entire section of My ePortfolio. There is a lot of information there, and that's why we'll probably have one or two segments about just the ePortfolio. Remember, if you're using your iPad, I'd always disable the menu tips on the bottom left, and that way it doesn't show all those boxes of helpful text that block some of your other information in the center of the screen. The first thing about your ePortfolio is your contact info, and some of that information was already populated by your district that made your username and password. For now, I can see my first and last name. I can select which grades I teach, which for me is actually the entire spectrum since I'm really a teacher trainer for all grade levels. So I'm going to go ahead and indicate that. This is also where you can change things in case next year you teach a different grade level. Now just a note to you, some people really like to keep their information private and that's okay. The only thing that you need to enter here is anything that has a red star next to it. So here it's just my first and last name really. If I scoot further down, I can enter more contact information about myself but then if you notice, for example, my cell phone number, I have an edit button right there. When I open the edit button, you can decide who gets to see this information. So here, you can say, oh, that's okay to share with the entire public. You can also select Epsilon, which means anybody with a username and password, not just the Texas educators, but also the nationwide colleges and universities that have access to Epsilon. And then uh, for me here, I selected institution. My institution currently is Region 19, so my coworkers get to see that uh, phone number when they log into my public website. At the very bottom, you can enter a web address for yourself. Maybe you have a different website or your school's website. 
Um, you can enter date of birth if you like. And again, the last thing is asking you if you even want to hide your ePortfolio from search engines. And then the one that I checked off says, allow me to log in using my primary email address. And that's important just in case you forget your username. You can alternatively type in your entire email, and that lets you log in as well. At the very, very bottom, any changes you've made, you definitely have to click on Update, or else those changes won't take effect. Here in green, it tells me that my profile was saved successfully. OK, so that's the contact info. Again, as much or little information as you want to give, it's totally up to you. And if things change there, like your email changes, your last name changes, you definitely want to go there to do that. All right, the first thing that's really important about your ePortfolio, your website, is your welcome note. That's really what they see, what people see, when they first go to your website. They might see your picture or an icon or an avatar that you've chosen, but what do they actually read when they first get there? Kind of like a welcome message to them. Hence, welcome note. It's kind of self-explanatory. So when I click on welcome note, I will see that I currently have two listed there. One says welcome, and it's kind of generic. Thank you for visiting my profile, etc. And then I have a sample one that says welcome to my secret page. I'm going to go ahead and erase my sample one so I can do another example for you. The trash can icon that I just used, by the way, is a generic delete icon for anything within Project Share. The pencil that you notice on the right is anything that you want to edit. So here, if I had a typo in this welcome note, instead of erasing the entire thing, I can just simply click on that pencil, make those changes, and then I'll have those updates ready in no time. But one of the things I wanted to know, um, one of the things I wanted you to see is that I have a button called Add a New Welcome Note on the right side. So you'll probably start off not having one at all. So this is your first step. And really, it's just about you typing a title for your welcome note. So I can do example one. And here I have a quick checkbox that says, do you want to show the title or not? Most of the time for a welcome note, I don't see a need for a title, so I always uncheck that. And then I have this box called my WYSIWYG editor. It's what you see is what you get. Usually if I were using a laptop right now, I would have the um, similar menu as Microsoft Word would, the bold, the italics, the underline, the font size, the font style. Things like that. For the iPad, um, that piece just doesn't show up right there above the, above the um, text box. So here I'm simply going to type, welcome to my homepage. This will, this will have weekly updates about what's going on in class. Pretend I'm a teacher. And then at the very bottom, I can select again, who gets to see this information? Is it OK for the entire public if they stumble upon my website? Is it just Epsilon members, or is it just my district, my institution? For now, I'm going to just select all. It's very generic. It doesn't have anything secret about it. And then I'll hit Save. It always asks you, are you sure, because it's going to be public, that this is content you really want to, s to share with everybody? And I usually hit OK. Just so you know, if you're using this with your students in your district, most districts will always have a setting where the student can never share beyond the institutional level. So that way, um, the outside public cannot find the information about the child that's under 18 years old. It'll only be um, school district employees and other students that can locate each other there for, for student access. OK, so here I have my welcome note finished. It reloaded my page and is showing me that I have the example welcome note now. To see how this works, to see if it really worked, and how it looks on the website, remember at the very top that you have that public URL? I'm going to click on that URL. And now, if you notice here, I have two welcome notes there. The one that I had previously called, thanks for visiting my profile, and then the one I just typed called, welcome to my homepage. So that kind of wraps up the first pieces of our ePortfolio on Project Share. I've covered that you have your contact information that you can change whenever you need to. And we've also talked about the welcome note, the first thing that people see when they visit your website. Look forward to seeing you on the next part of the portfolio, and thanks for tuning in.